it's kind of bizarre because everything that I wanted to say this morning has actually been said. And um, if you know me, I usually have a lot to say. So that's a good thing considering time is getting on. But it just felt timeless. We've been an hour and 20 minutes if my math is still working right. Time just seems to shift and to change when we just yield ourselves to him. And I appreciate everyone's obedience who shared this morning, but also for those who received that word. This morning, I just couldn't find a starting spot, which, you know, that's typical for me. But I'm going to just try to speak one scripture of, of what we have. But it was just spoken now that we're I mean, I have it right here. It says, this is a marathon, not a sprint. That was my opening line. <laughs> and my wife just says, you know, we're, not in, a mar- we're in a marathon. Um, and if we're not conditioned for that, we easily feel like, well, I've just run as hard as I can, and now I've got nothing left, and so we give up. Not recognizing it will take conditioning. It's amazing to me when I look around. I feel like things that used to just seem to be easy, even those things are becoming difficult. Even um, just basic parts of life that used to be simple, there's always complexity now. And uh, we're going to have to be ready to go the distance with this. We're going to have to be ready to hold our heads up over time. It's, uh, it, it brought me back. The other, the other part of what I was with the Lord, like I felt him speak to me, what did I already say? And so I immediately go back and I'm looking through some of the notes of what I've been sharing. And I ended up all the way back to where uh, we had Pastor uh, Rich Caliendo and Daniel Ray and Chris Politillo and uh, David Cordo shared messages, and I was just going through my notes as I listened to their messages, and, um, you know, this one, they all are, are, are powerful, but this one just jumped out at me as I was looking back at what did God already say, and again, she just tells everybody, what have I already said, what have I done, and so I know that there's something I'm supposed to share with you this morning, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we could all just um, spend the rest of this time just greeting one another and, and uh, heading home, because he's, he's done so much, but this thing is a process, and Pastor Daniel shared a message about perspective and how it needs to change, and he used this illustration of nobody goes to the gym one time and expects, you know, the, whatever the reason they're going to the gym, it's not going to happen the first time you go. The only thing that's going to happen the first time you go to the gym, the only thing you are going to get is sore. <laughs> that you will get. You'll get soreness. You won't get skinny from one trip to the gym. Unless you're already skinny and you're just going there to show off. We, there's plenty of those there too. You won't get buff and built if you're a guy trying to build muscle. Everybody knows it's just silly. It takes resistance over time to produce the result that draws you to the gym. And I felt like this morning as that blank piece of paper was held up before us, I'm reminded of a physical trainer. When you go to the gym and you don't know anything about how to, you know, proceed to get to the vision that you have, the first thing any decent physical trainer is going to ask you is, what are your goals? What do you want to accomplish while you're here? (laughs) What do you see yourself looking like? Because he can see what you look like. He needs to know what's in your mind already about what it is you want him to help you accomplish. Remember, the Holy Spirit's our helper. He does not just override us and make us do something that we don't want to do. He comes to lead us and to guide us into truth according to our willingness and our desire to go there. He's not just a manipulator of our lives. He is the leader of our lives, and we're to follow him, and we're to walk alongside him and to be yoked with him, but he is not there to just dominate and dictate every tiny step of our life. He wants us to trust him to lead us and to guide us into all truth. And as you begin to think about the Holy Spirit, this morning I just felt, you know, there's going to be different types of people here this morning. There's going to be some folks that just don't get what is waves? We're talking about waves. I'm still fully dry. I mean, I'm wet because I'm sweating, but I was holding my son the whole time, jumping around. I'm like, man, I put him down and I realized I was all sweaty. Where's these waves? What are they? Can they be measured? Can, no, it's, it's a spiritual issue. It's a spiritual heart reality that you can only access by faith. You've got to go beyond the realms of what's measurable here and access it by spirit. And I feel the Holy Spirit is asking us this morning, What are the goals and the visions that he's placed within us? But we have to own them and say, this is what I believe I'm supposed to do. And then he empowers the seeds that he planted there by his word to bring them into fulfillment. But it's our willingness. It's our desire to follow and to obey his voice. But it's a process. It's a process. 
It's over time. <laughs> it's amazing this difficulty that seems to be touching so many areas of our lives on this earth right now. It just feels like a season, and I don't know how long the season lasts. It might be until the end. I don't know. Maybe things are winding down, and it's time for Jesus to come back. It feels like that sometimes. But I think the Holy Spirit this morning, right from the very first prophetic word, was saying, what are the goals and the vision that he has placed in our hearts? Because if there's nothing there, that's a problem. By default, we will all just gratify and fulfill what we feel like we want our life to be. And I was going to read Romans 12, verse 2. Uh, to just illustrate this idea that life uh, in Christ is a process by which we're being transformed and the, the continuous nature of the words that are used in this scripture. But as I went there, I realized it starts with the word and. Verse 2 starts with the word and. And do not be conformed. Who knows that scripture? I won't be long. I know I'm just taking my time, but I'm saving most of what I've got today. I think for whenever I actually get some time up here. I wouldn't care if this happened every week. This is amazing. Um, the sense of God's spirit, but you just got to be willing to open your heart to it. And sometimes it takes multiple times, but it'll come. It'll happen. It'll be a revelation moment where all of a sudden you reach out strong enough for him to say, okay, now you really are ready for what I've got for you. But it starts with the word and, and anytime something starts with and, I used to love diagramming sentences. I think I was, I don't know if they do that anymore, but I used to love diagramming sentences in English. I love the, you know, the more complex, the better. You got these little things going up and adverbial phrases and all these conjunctions and you write it all in. I loved understanding sentence structure. And this word and requires that we read what was just written. It demands it. In Scripture, you can't take things out of context. If you just take pieces and parts, you're going to get really confused. You've got to feel what the author is trying to say. And Paul is saying in Romans, he says, I beseech you. Now I'm back to verse 1. We'll start at the beginning where he meant us to start. Because that's a good, you know, and do not be conformed to this world. That's a good Scripture. Many people know it. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's on a lot of t-shirts and a lot of rehab programs, a lot of uh, places where we need to get our, our thinking corrected. But it doesn't start with and don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It starts with, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you would present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Which actually, let me read it in the New Living Translation. It says, and so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has already done for you. Let them be a living and a holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Worship is not music. Worship is obedience. To present our bodies as a living sacrifice, it says it's a reasonable service. The word service is the same word for worship. When we serve him and we obey him, when we follow his commands, we are worshiping him. That's our reasonable service. That's the acceptable worship to God. And then it says, don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. Then you will learn how to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. If we're going to fulfill the transformation process, there has to be a renewing of our minds, which comes through what? What we're absorbing in the information that we allow in. We know that the stuff that we read changes the way that you feel. When you read bad news, you, your body chemically embraces a different sentiment or existence for that moment. Just for having read words on a page. For having heard a voice speak to you. Your body is instantly transformed chemically, physically, literally by news and by information. How much more so when the word of God comes into us and we we agree with it by faith and we receive it as the, as the implanted word. It has the power to physically, literally transform the chemistry of our bodies. That's not positive thinking. That's not the power of healing through positive. That's the power of the truth of what the reality is. We understand it in the negative. We understand doctors will tell you stress will kill you. Why? It produces a whole bunch of chemistry that your body then has to try to deal with and cope with, and it produces high blood pressure. High blood pressure is not a thing. It's caused because of other things that are affecting your body. It's just a symptom. It's, not the, it's nothing of itself. 
We understand it in the natural and the negative, but how much more so? And I feel like what God's calling his church to now in this extended period of interceding for our nation, interceding for our leaders, interceding for a future that allows our children to live in a land that's still free, where religion can still be practiced freely, where the right to assemble and peacefully gather is still protected, where the, the right to protect ourselves is upheld, and, and, and this is what we're up against. We're up against uh, the, the, the precipice of what America will look like for the rest of time. And it's important that as those who believe and who know the truth and who are going to stand for truth, are going to fight for truth, contend for the truth, that the truth will prevail. For those of us who are going to take that stand, it's important that we don't grow weary while we're doing it. That we don't give up from fatigue, that we recognize it's going to be a process. It says that we are going to be progressively transformed by the renewing of our minds. And if our mind can be transformed, it can also be deformed by the wrong information that we allow in. We've got to embrace truth like we've never had it before. Because when you embrace truth, it might not be comfortable for a minute, but it allows you to grow in the right direction. And in the direction of transformation, not being deformed by the ways of this world says you can't be conformed to this world and expect the transformation of a renewed mind to happen it's not going to work it won't happen you'll be continuously shaped by the world and then try to get shaped by the word of truth and when those two things are at war you're just going to get confused exhausted and give up it is a time where we filter i was looking back and i was reading what pastor chris had said who says the things that we listen to what right does someone have to speak into our lives there's all kinds of voices that are thinking, well, maybe if we're louder than everybody else, they'll listen to us. And it's pretty much working, sadly. And there's a voice of fear. There's a voice of, of domination and, and population control. And they just want citizens to be these little puppets that just do exactly what they're told. Like, it's demonic. It's filthy. It's rotten. It's disgraceful. It's not biblical. But people, once they're embodied in fear and they're wrapped up and they're just in these places of not being able to freely express their hearts to God and to be obedient to Him alone then they're able to be kept in this place of bondage. And it's sad. But, the, but Paul's saying, don't copy the behavior, the customs of this world. Don't be conformed to this world. You can't absorb one set of information and then come and expect to read the word and have it do what it's really supposed to do. This constant thing happening. We have to filter and only listen to those who have a right to speak into our lives. First and foremost, the word of truth. And whenever something conflicts that, we ignore it completely. Jesus didn't say there wouldn't be other voices. He says that my sheep won't follow those voices because they know my voice, the true shepherd. There's a lot of voices and simple people with just maybe a little fear, maybe a little bit worried what people might think. They're just, they're following after voices that are not the voice of Christ. That are not the voice of the one who says, don't forsake the gathering together of the saints. Especially as you see the end approaching. We're here this morning because Jesus has told us we ought to be here. We're gathered together because he said to do it by the Spirit. Close with this scripture in Galatians. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows that he will also reap. That can be the greatest promise scripture that you've ever read or it can be one of the more condemning scriptures you ever read. Because whatever you plant, you're going to pick it. What you put in the ground is what's going to sprout and come to life. And if you're sowing the same negativity and fear that this world is sowing or anger or whatever else that just seems to be erupting every time you turn around and someone doesn't get their way, it's just burn and smash and riot and hurt people and it's just disgraceful, it's evil, but it's, at it's purest but there's a harvest for all that and that's not a pretty harvest and sadly much of it will be reaped here since it was sown here in our country but God's bigger than that thankfully his grace can overcome bad harvests but the principle is what, is what Paul's writing about. He says, for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. If you're just sowing natural information into your bodies from what everyone says is important to, to know about, you're going to feel the effect of that. And the Bible calls it corruption. You're going to feel a decay on the inside. It's not moving you towards light and joy and hope and peace of the fruits of the Spirit. It's leading you to a place of fear and bondage and restriction. And I don't know, do I dare... What will people think? It's just a 
terrible, but there's only two ways to go. And that's what he's trying to say. If you sow to the natural, to the flesh, you're going to reap from that realm a corrupted harvest because the, the, the ground is corrupted. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, yes, I don't like the season. I don't think many people here like the season that we're in. I don't like it. Most people, as they get older, they move to Florida because why? It's just they don't like the snow. They don't like the cold. They don't like the weather. We understand that certain seasons are not desirable. They're not fun to be in. They're not our favorite time of year. But the reality is, it says that we won't grow, if we don't grow weary, in due season, spring is going to come. We says we will reap. If we do not lose heart, bad information, negative information, what it does to us is it takes away the heart part, the core part of us, the part of us that's supposed to be pursuing the Holy Spirit as he leads us into the vision that he's given us for our life. And it begins to distract us with the conformity of this world and the things they say are important. And I'm telling you, there's just nothing that they say right now that's important. It doesn't mean anything. The more that people... Simple, poor-minded people, weak in spirit, absorb the information of this world, the more crippled and mangled and distorted lives are going to become. There are people out there saying that there's a limit to how many people you're allowed to have in your house on Thanksgiving Day. If you are here and your mind doesn't explode when you hear that with just disbelief, I'm sorry, I can't relate to you at all. If we do not lose heart, God wants us to understand who we are. We're his kids. We were sent here to reign and to rule. Yes, our God reigns. Guess what? He's coming back when his enemies have been made his footstool. By who? By the church. By people who dare to believe regardless of what anybody else thinks or says. This is who we are. You don't have to like it. It's not comfortable. I don't like saying things like that. But you know what? If I don't say it, God forbid someone thinks that's a viable option to let someone else tell you as an American citizen, as a believer in Jesus Christ who set us free. But people that are of a fearful mind, they'll absorb that. The seeds will get in and they'll start having a conversation. I see people posting about this and then you'll see people, oh, I agree, I disagree. Mmm. It's a good thing she's about to start playing. (laughs) Thank you, honey. You just saved me. When the opinions of people mean anything at all, when they're even on the same page as what God's Word says, and we're daring to compare that, folks, we have fallen from grace. We have fallen from the strength that's supposed to exude from within us because we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. I mean, early church folks had to meet in tombs underground in direct violation, knowing they would be thrown to the lions if they were caught. Why? The Scripture says, don't forsake the gathering together of yourselves as has become the manner of some. Even so much more as you see the day approaching. This American independent spirit has made us think we're all just going to be able to make it all on our own, islands to ourselves. It's not how it's going to work. When hardship comes, the first thing that happens is people begin to pull resources. Who are you going to pull your resources with? Have you, are you building those relationships? Because hardship's coming. People say, well, you can't hold back the tide. That's okay. I'd rather be on the beach trying. And go drown as the tide comes in and I can't stop it. Because I'm told to do that. I'm told I'm salt and I'm light. I'm not told that I'm supposed to go hide someplace until Jesus comes back. There is a reality of responsibility that we have to grasp as his bride. He is expecting us to reign and to rule in his absence physically. Even though he's here spiritually. Physical Jesus is coming back to receive us. Therefore, we're sowing, we're reaping, we're going to reap it in the right season as long as we don't lose heart. 
Therefore, it's just a connector. It means you can't divorce any part of this language from another phrase. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. I honestly believe that in the demonic realm, there's actually, I don't believe it, I know it to be true. I've been following this for decades. There is a literal talons, whatever they are, trying to pull apart families. Because once you break apart a family, it hurts. If you've lived through that, you know how much it hurts. If you're in the middle of that, you know how much you're going through. If you've healed from that, thank God, help someone else heal from it. But the point is, it's God's order to bring people together into families. And he's, there's this force that's just intent on pulling that apart. And it's just escalating in the way it's being expressed. And then you, you hear people that think it's okay to touch what is sacred that claim a responsibility and an authority that they actually don't have. <laughs> I thank God for our Constitution, folks. If you don't understand the Constitution of this country, you owe it to yourself to get to know it. You, it's not that long to read. You better learn it. You better learn what consent of the governed means. You better learn what consent of the governed means. These people with big mouths that are touching things that they ought not touch, they're usurping an authority that they do not have. In our kingdom reality, we have an authority that the enemy knows we have. When Jesus was tempted three different times, he just told the devil, hey, it's written. Bend your knee, buddy. You're not coming at me today. You cannot overpower the word of God. We have that to stand on. We have the word that says if Jesus says I'm free, I'm free indeed. If the Holy Spirit says I want to empower you to walk through a fire that you're going to naturally think will consume you, but you're going to come out okay on the other side, then we step into the flames. Why? Because he said it, because his word says it, and he's not a man that he can lie. He means what he says, and he says only what he means to bring into completion. I want to encourage you this morning. There's a lot of folks that are more distracted with what's happening in the natural structures of, of, of politics and, 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 and things of, of this world. Get above it. Realize that our authority to speak into those realms doesn't come because we're in it. Because it comes because we're above it. We are citizens of a heaven called, a kingdom called heaven. And he expects us to have influence. He expects us to say, yeah, say what all you want. You're just a bunch of hot air. <laughs> Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, not Daniel, but the three. He said, oh, king, <laughs> kill us if you want. Oh, king, we will not bow down and worship this stupid imitation that's supposed to. It's time to live above the opinions of people, folks. If you ever see me post something on social media, you'll notice one thing. I will never read the comments, and I will never respond to a comment. Because if I put something out there, I just want it to be, I just want people to know this is my position. I couldn't care less what you think. I hope you can get there. Because some people take the side of, well, i got to defend everything I say, and they just they end up being aggressive and they end up hurting people. If you need to say something, say it, and let it speak for itself. We live in the, under the curse of a culture that believes they have to please everybody and keep everybody happy. There's only one person. It says he is the one whose will is acceptable, that it can be perfect, and that if we will lay down our lives as a living sacrifice which is our reasonable service that he will transform us as our minds are renewed day by day. Let's stand together this morning. God, I thank you for the truth. Lord, when I feel like I'm standing next to you, there's such a boldness that I feel, and I just thank you that it's available to all of us, that we can just come to a place of realizing you have called us to shine with your glory. 
to shine with your truth, to declare that we will have joy regardless of what anybody else says we're supposed to have. We're supposed to have gloom and fear and and doom over our lives and we're supposed to be afraid of invisible garbage. Father, we thank you for your light that breaks through and exposes the lies of the enemy that demonstrates the power that is above every other power. That you alone are the name that is above every name. And Father, may our knees bow to no other name than your name. Father, help us to not even consider the voice of a stranger, the accuser, the one who would love to see the most precious unit of any nation broken apart, Lord. We pray this morning for families. We pray for families, God. Not just here in America, but in the mission field where couples are just dealing with the stress of being so far away and we know that it's the families the marriages that always come under attack father we just pray that you would refresh strengthen put fresh eyes fresh perspective in the hearts of human beings that they could understand you complete what you start god that is your word came forth jesus that we would not divorce you Because you've never divorced us, God. All the times when it would have been so justified to just start working with someone else. God, you keep coming back and you win our hearts. You show us a love. We can't even understand it. God, this morning, we just want to be marked by that reality that we're a people of unlimited love. And that when we stand for truth, we don't do it with arrogance or self-righteousness, but we do it knowing that as a living sacrifice, it could cost us everything. But we do it because it's our reasonable act of worship to you, God. We're here to declare you as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the Savior and the Redeemer. You are the name above every name. You are the one that we bend our knee to, Jesus. God, this morning I just pray that you would lift up heavy hearts. The hearts that have never known the true joy of the Lord that's our strength. Oh God, let it just begin to bubble up this week as they remember maybe this atmosphere. Something from here goes with them or they find it in your word or in a song. Lord, help us week by week to grow stronger and stronger in you and in your glory. Oh Jesus, we thank you that you are here with us now, forever to the very end of this age and you'll never leave us orphans you have adopted us in jesus thank you we are accepted in the beloved god we just give you this day we give you um, just praise and thanks for the way that you've ministered to us father we just seal these words especially the ones that you spoke through your prophets in this house this morning May we continue to allow them to grow in the soil of our heart. In Jesus' name, amen. If you could use prayer this morning for any, if we're going to clap, let's clap for Jesus. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. You are the faithful one, God. You are the faithful one, Jesus. Ah, he's so faithful. He is so faithful.